Saddam Hussein's foreign minister Thorik Aziz was sentenced to death by hanging on Tuesday for persecuting members of Shia religious parties under the former regime. We have the details. Iraq's High Criminal Court spokesman Mohammed Abdul Sahib did not say when Aziz, 74, would be put to death. The death sentence was for conviction on charges of taking part in a Saddam-led campaign that hunted and killed members of the Shi'i Tawa party, of which current Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki is a member. Aziz, a Christian who became known as the international face of Saddam's regime, has already been convicted and sentenced to 15 years in prison for his role in the 1992 execution of 42 merchants found guilty of profiteering. He also received a seven-year prison sentence for a case involving the forced displacement of Kurdis in northern Iraq. In a recent interview with the Associated Press, as he's predicted, he will die in prison, citing his old age and lengthy prison sentences. In Baghdad on Tuesday, reaction was mixed. Aziz surrendered to U.S. forces about a month after the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq in March 2003. He was held at an American prison in Baghdad until the U.S. handed over control of the facility in July to the Iraqi government. When Aziz was transferred from U.S. to Iraqi custody, his family said they were worried about his health in Baghdad's Khazimia prison, where Aziz is being held now. He has suffered several strokes while in Iraqi custody. He used a cane for support during recent court appearances. Aziz was a fierce critic of the United States, both as foreign minister after Iraq's 1990 invasion of Kuwait and later as a deputy prime minister who frequently traveled abroad on diplomatic missions. Bolivian President Evo Morales arrives in Tehran for talks with Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, which are expected to focus on energy, industry and trade. Energy-rich Bolivia and Iran established relations in September 2007 when Ahmadinejad made an official trip to La Paz to sign trade and energy accords. Like his ally Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, Morales has cultivated increasingly closer relations with Tehran, which has raised concerns in Washington. Many Western states suspect Iran of having a nuclear weapons program, which it denies. Morales intends to encourage Iran to establish a stronger presence in Bolivia, and plans to sign cooperation agreements on a number of issues, including the transfer of Iranian technology to the South American nation. This is his second visit to Iran over the past two years. The two countries will be discussing details of a plan for 287 million U.S. dollars in Iranian investment in Bolivia. Less than two months ago, Tehran extended La Paz a credit line of about 287 million dollars as development aid particularly for mineral exploration and textile industry. Tehran and La Paz are also expected to sign agreements on cooperation in cement production, industrial machinery and food industry projects. A cholera outbreak that has killed more than 250 people in rural Haiti is stabilizing as aid groups and the government race to prevent it from spreading into the capital's squalid camps of earthquake survivors. The outbreak was expected to continue spreading, but aid groups and the government said a drop in the death rate and the number of new cases suggested it could progress more gradually than feared. Yet the shortage of doctors or government officials in Haiti's countryside make this assertion difficult to verify. In a small town not far from ST Mark, the epic center of the outbreak, crowds of people poured into a small clinic at the local hospital where a team of doctors without borders had arrived the previous day. Obli Bocher, leading the team, said efforts were ongoing to make clean water available as well as providing treatment and medical supplies including soap and water purification tablets. Cholera can cause vomiting and diarrhea so severe it can kill from dehydration in hours. Aid workers say the risk of cholera is magnified by the extreme poverty faced by people displaced by the 12th January quake, which killed as many as 300,000 people and destroyed much of the capital city. Health Minister Director Gabriel Timothy said the outbreak has killed 259 people. At a news conference on Monday, he said only 2,981 people were hospitalized in the Atibonite region, a smaller number than in previous days. UN spokesman Martin Nesirki said the United Nations was airlifting chlorine bags to all water pipeline systems in the affected areas and providing overland transport and storage in support of aid efforts. 
Iran began loading fuel into the core of its first nuclear power plant on Tuesday, moving closer to the startup of a facility that the U.S. once hoped to stop over fears of Tehran's nuclear ambitions. Iranian and Russian engineers started moving nuclear fuel into the main reactor building in August, but a reported leak in a storage pool delayed injection of the fuel into the reactor. Mohammad Ahmadiyan, Iran's Atomic Energy Organization nuclear plant's deputy, said nearly 160 fuel rods have been placed in the core of the reactor, which in fact will be the energy production stage and the key stage for its operation. The U.S. withdrew its opposition to the plant after Russia satisfied concerns over how it would be filled and the fate of the spent fuel rods. Worries remain, however, over Iran's nuclear program to enrich uranium for nuclear fuel since much further enrichment can be used to create weapons grade material. As the country began injecting fuel, the Iranian foreign ministry spokesman insisted that his country is determined to follow its nuclear plans in order to benefit from alternative energies. Iran says the 1,000 megawatt nuclear plant built with the help of Russia will begin generating electricity in early 2011 after years of delays. Under a contract signed between Iran and Russia in 1995, the Bushehr nuclear power plant was originally scheduled to come on stream in July 1999, but the startup has been delayed repeatedly by construction and supply glitches. Iranian officials have sporadically criticized Russia for the delays, some calling Moscow an unreliable partner and others accusing Russia of using the reactor as a lever in nuclear diplomacy with Iran. Russia began shipping fuel for the plant in 2007. At the plant's inauguration on August 21st, Iran's Vice President Ali Akbar Salehi had said loading the fuel into the reactor core would take place over two weeks and the plant would they produce electricity two months later in November. Earlier this month, he said that the startup was postponed because of a small leak. Originally, there had been speculation that a computer worm found on the laptops of several plant employees might have been behind the delay. The Boucher plant overlooks the Persian Gulf and is visible from several miles away with its cream-colored dome dominating the green landscape. Soldiers maintain a 24-hour watch on roads leading up to the plant, mainly in anti-craft guns and supported by numerous radar stations. Germany's defense minister says on Tuesday that the country will begin a major restructuring of the military next year as it moves from a Cold War conscript army to one better position to face today's threats while also cutting costs. As he was presented with an expert commission's recommendations on how to proceed, Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg told reporters that the overall restructuring is expected to take five to eight years. Zugetenberg said all of the analysis underscores the importance of dramatic changes and that they cannot accomplish this with cosmetic measures alone. The commission headed by Federal Labor Chief Frank Jugenweis is recommending a reduction of ministry staff from 3,300 to 1,600 and cutting the military from 250,000 to 180,000 troops. At the same time, it wants to double the number of troops that can be deployed at any one time from 7,000 to 14,000. Zugatenberg said that the government will decide by the end of January how to proceed.